We're on. Good afternoon to our UK and European viewers. And good morning to the Americans. Hi there, I'm Alistair and I head up graphic design and creative projects at Turtle. I'm Danny. I'm Turtle's content strategist, and I spend a lot of time using Turtle for our own content. And we are here today to talk about a really fun topic. Design! Yes. Um, as you probably know, you don't have to be a designer to use Turtle, but some basic knowledge of design can go a long way to help you improve the impact of the content you make and increase reader engagement. Danny and I have been working with the tool for a long time now, and we know it pretty well. So we thought we'd share some of our knowledge with you um, and things that we've learned over the past. Uh, design is a broad topic. So today we're focusing primarily on design elements directly related to Turtle and content creation. Otherwise, we could go on and on about principles which are not really relevant. First off, um, in case there's anybody who's less familiar with the tool at this point in time, um, the Turtle format consists of two types of pages. The surf page, which is this one, and EMS, which is this one. Surf pages are always on brand, generally speaking. Easy to edit, and with a wide variety of surf styles to choose from, it's difficult to get it wrong. The immersed level is where the bulk of your content lies, um, and where there's the greatest amount of flexibility in what you create. Um, it's where you can combine interactive elements, imagery, video, um, and of course, all of your copy. Um, and because of that, it is more time consuming to create la layouts here than it is in the surf level. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it takes, it's a labor of love, it takes a little bit more time to get right than a surf level. So for that reason, um, today we're focusing on immersed level layouts and we will revisit this particular layout uh, a little bit later on. So I've got a good heading here, stand first, quotes, and nice, uh, Danny picked this picture up, but um, yeah, quite striking. Channeled my emotions. <laughs> and so we will recreate how we actually created this layout and hopefully do some even more advanced ones. Um, so for the purposes of this demo, we're focusing on what I've, what we agree to be the three main components of content design. And these are typography, imagery and composition. So yeah, typography is the words, imagery is the pictures, and composition is bringing those two things together. So first off, typography. Um, typography is all about bringing written words to life. Um, we're gonna talk you through three principles, um, hierarchy, prominence, and decoration. Over to you. Thank you very much. So the first one, uh, hierarchy. This is about using predefined textiles and rules to maintain consistency and information structure. Turtle uses the same typographic hierarchy as web design uh, with large headings, your H1s, being primary page headings, uh, medium and small headings, your H2s and your H3s, um, which are used to chunk information into secondary and tertiary sections. And then your body copy, um, which is where it's the body of the content. It's where, yeah, uh, where the writers sing. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is um, when you, when too much copy, uh, when one is presented with too much copy, it's a bit of a brain drain. So for example, um, this piece from November 1899 entitled The Designer. Um, this is an example of typesetting, not typography. It's just a wash of body copy. And it's not a very pleasant thing to look at. The only graphic device going on here is that it's in a two column layout, uh, column one, column two, and a tiny little title. There's no contrast. Um, there's nothing really appealing about this whatsoever. Your eye isn't drawn to any particular part of the page. You're just kind of a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah, so moving on to something a little bit better. Um, I call this good typography. It's not amazing, but um, starts with a nice big heading. Um, black line is quite a nice accent, which could probably be uploaded to Turtle as a uh, JPEG or a GIF or PNG, or we could actually just build it into the theme. Into a feature box. Yeah, or a feature box. Um, running from the large heading into your stand first, um, which sort of introduces what this piece is about. The main heading uh, 
says what it is. Simple rules for good typography. Your stand first will explain a little bit more and generally let your reader know if they want to continue reading the piece. Um, so I, this is where copywriting and good words uh, are really important, these two. Um, and then we move down into medium headings or small headings, uh, which are used to chunk the rest of this information here. So it says, don't use too many typefaces, hierarchy, which we're talking about, which is great. Font size, uh, letting, kerning, uh, these are some new features in Turtle which we'll talk about later as well. But overall, the, the contrast and the hierarchy of font size and setting is really um, important. It's visually pleasing. And when you compare these two side by side, they are worlds apart. On to the next one, prominence. Um, so this is using typography to draw attention. You can use typography to lead the eye around the page or around the layout. You can also use it to draw the eye to calls to actions and key messages. So first example, um, this is literally drawing the eye around the page uh, with text going vertical. Um, and this is a piece from 2013 when it was cool. Uh, but I wouldn't actually do this today. Um, leading the eye again, starting with great display type on a dark background. Really, really nice color combinations as well. Um, but you're immediately drawn um, to these dates. And um, is this Spanish? <laughs> um, on to the next one. No, uh, so it goes from extra large headings um, onto the next large heading, onto your stand first, your body copy. And then the eye was drawn lastly to the smallest element of the page. Um, and healthy doses of white space in between all of these elements. So uh, it, it's literally drawing the eye in a spiral. Um, this side, this side, this side, and down to the small elements. White space is going to be a bit of a recurring theme in this webinar, so this will not be the first time Ali mentions it. No, it's not. I've already done a turtle story on white space, which, uh, yeah, it's one of our most famous pieces, isn't it, Danny? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> On to the second point, drawing attention um, with white space. There's a massive amount of white space here. But um, if you are immediately presented with this layout, your eye is going to come onto this quote, all out is relationships all out, and then follows onto the body copy. So um, it's yeah, kind of strange that we've drawn onto the right hand side page first and then left. But um, that's what happens with uh, using type sizes for prominence. Uh, last one. Here's a call to action, connect with us, the eye is drawn here, and then it's secondarily drawn to come to an This was for UCA, but a famous design company called Spin. Um, very, very experimental uh, colors and layouts. Uh, I absolutely love it. On to the last one, using typography as art. So um, this is when typography words become an active element of the design. Um, type becomes the actual image. It's great for aesthetics. It's great for immediate visual appeal. Um, this section is where you need to call on your brand department. For example, um, there's no font, which will actually recreate this, where it says light it up. Um, your graphic designers and your art directors will have to actually come up with this visual asset and you'd have to save it out as a JPEG. You, if it was moving, um, you could save it out as GIF um, and stick it as the background image on the surf page. Um, <clears throat> really, really impactful stuff. Um, here, also just using dates as, as the visual element of a spread and massive quotes. Um, so this is sort of design for design's sake and text as decoration. Okay, so let's move into a type Graphic demo, Danny. That's me. OK. Um, so let's have a look at how you apply some of this stuff in Turtle. Um, so we have here just some completely unstyled copy. Um, and what we're going to try and do is transform it into this. Very simple. Not a lot going on because we've not included any images or anything that kind of distracts from the copy at this point. Um, but you'll see some of the elements that we talked about before. So we're going to have um, main um, title, uh, stand first, some section titles, and we're just going to highlight part of the copy using a feature box. Yeah, it's already looking a lot better than the previous version. Just, yeah, much more exciting than this. Yeah. Um, so some of you will be very familiar with how you do this. Others who are slightly newer to Turtle, um, if you have any questions about 
achieving this afterwards, do let us know, but I'm just going to whiz through it now. Um, so applying kind of the headings to the heading sections, as simple as just selecting the copy that you want to style and choosing the relevant section. Yeah, chunking the body copy into different sections. And we wanted to turn this first paragraph into a stand first, and for that I'm just going to choose the large textile because it's not a heading, but we want it to be a bigger size. Um, we are going to take this last paragraph here, um, and that's going to become our feature box. But I'm just going to add the medium title first, select it, hit feature. Um, now I want this to be styled. Oh, oh, I also want to pin it. Um, so pin it first, and then style to our deep color. Um, there we go. Now, one of the newer additions to um, the title editor is the ability to change um, the gaps between copy. And this can be useful if you've got one of these bad boys down a here. Widow. A widow. Um, and you change this by hitting control and option um, if you're on a MacBook. And Ali, do you use it different on? That's going uh -huh. to my um, back. But you just hit left or right, depending on whether you want to um, stretch out the spacing or um, shorten it. And there you can see it, it popped up. It um, changes the tracking of, of the letters. The um, line here. So yeah. it's no longer a widow hanging off the bottom. Very, very useful for those that are sensitive um, to these sorts of things, copywriters especially, and graphic designers. Um, we can't stand widows. So Oops. this is a, a great new feature which we've built into the product. And um, yeah, we build new things into the product on uh, a weekly basis uh, based on customer requests. Um, so if you have any requests, then ask us some questions and yeah, it'd be good to hear from you. And voila, as they say. Um, uh, we recreated that in about, what was that, 30 seconds to a minute? Yeah. Lovely. Um, and before we move on from topography, some of those kind of Oh, large. Okay. Oh, we've just had a question come through. Yeah. Can um, we show the letter spacing again? Yes, I will show you on this page. In yes. Because um, what I'm going to do is show uh, an example of using quotes as a uh, an element of topography to kind of elevate the design. So if you use the kind of massive jumbo uh, quote style, then your quotes become a feature in themselves. Uh, so in this instance, I'm going to move this one across. Um, and then you can either leave the copy like this, and this becomes quite, uh, you know, white space heavy, which sounds like a paradox, but I mean it in a good way. Um, you could also maybe, if you wanted to move this section up here um, and move this down a bit, or maybe even stretch this across down here. Um, that's, and it, that's starting to look like one of the layouts. And, uh, it's a bit more editorial, session. yeah. It's sort of what you would expect to see in a magazine. Um, and again, super quick to do. And you can just sort of play around um, with where you want these elements to sit and how that affects the copy that's um, in the body. Because that will break up and flow naturally, assuming you don't have that in a, in a feature box. Um, and here we have another example of um, a widow. So what we do is hit control and option at the same time. And in this instance, I'm going to go left on the arrows because I want to reduce the space. And I just tap, tap, tap. And it, it um, at some point will then be enough for that book to kind of go up onto the previous line. Yeah. It's taking more. quite a few taps. Be I don't more. want to overdo it. There we go. Oh, um, perfect. Perfect. So, uh, Marcus, to get back to your question, I think on Windows, it's going to be Alt Option and your left and right keys. Um, Otherwise, we'll have to confirm that a little bit later. Yeah, I think we've got PC. It's all arrow. Yeah. Alt and arrow keys, left and right, if you're working on a Windows machine. If you're working on a Mac machine, click on the paragraph. Um, it works for headings as well, I think. Uh, but mainly it's for your body copy to get rid of rogue words, which can be really annoying. Um, so if you're on a Mac, hit Control Option, left and right. Um, to reset letter spacing to how it was and to actually bring the widow back again, you hit Control Option, zero. And now it's back, which is not oh, great at all. Just undone my back. Ah, sorry. Okay. Um, so that was some tips around topography. Let's move on to our next um, key element, which is imagery. Imagery. Um, right. So one of the great things about using Turtle is the ease with which you can add and crop and shift the layout of your images. 
um, putting some extra thought into your image selection um, can really help you crank up the quality of your content. Um, so we're going to look at a few ways in which you can do that. Okay, just a quick answer to Emma's question. Is there any way to alter, this was from the previous section, is there any way to alter the quote box so that the second quotation mark appears? This is theme dependent, so you, um, you, it's sort of built into the theme if you want a massive ornament to close off the quote. Uh, most people opt not to have it, but it, it's something that we can actually build into a theme, but it has to come through the design department here, Turtle. Uh, yeah, it's something that you might want to manager. speak to um, your uh, brand team about as well, because that will depend on, on the, the star guidelines that you follow. Um, we kind of follow uh, quite common editorial approaches to this way. You just have that one big, if it's a stylized, what we call pull quotes, then um, they just have that one large opening quotation mark. Yeah. And that's all you need to showcase the fact that this is a quote. But every customer theme is different, and we've had some, we've had some, uh, done some crazy things. Um, with <laughs> uh, some people have crazy. them always centered with an ornament at the top and the bottom. Um, we, this demo, we are actually using our turtle theme, um, where we have normal quotes, medium quotes, and jumbo quotes. Um, oh. There's some we, extra questions coming. Yeah, we might wait to, with some of these questions um, till the end so we make sure that we have time to go through everything and any questions that we don't manage to answer live, uh, we'll make sure are followed up. Yeah, so you'll and we'll get back to you, Stuart, about disappearing feature boxes. That is, it can be really annoying, um, but Danny and I use Turtle every day and we know how to overcome these things. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get back so, to you. Yeah. All right, pictures, powerful storytellers. Ah, uh, right, so it's my turn. Um, a picture tells a thousand words, or so they say. Um, and we have some facts here. Copy with relevant imagery compared to copy alone is more than five times as memorable. It's more, it's 50% more persuasive, and it's 35% more easily understood. So the previous section we were working with was all copy, it was just all text. Um, and now we're moving into the images and you know spicing up layouts and <clears throat> um, adding a, a completely another dimension um, to achieve these figures. Um, okay, so there, uh, I've identified two main components to selecting images, and we do actually get this question quite a lot about how to select images for a total story um, and for publications that you're working on. Your best practice and yeah, it's even something that I that regularly take. kind of poke Ali about because I need a bit of help yeah. with the content that, that I'm creating for us. <laughs> so uh, I've identified two ways of actually doing this. One is to set the tone, um, and two is selecting visual themes. So starting with selecting the tone, um, I think that it is it's best practice to set the tone of your images according to your audience. Um, so here on the left, we have a little pug. Is that a pug? It is a baby pug. And I'm calling this pretty informal. Um, on the right, <laughs> on the right hand side, we have a, a fairly generic stock image. We've seen this around um, quite often, uh, but I'd call this formal. So on the left hand side, I'd use this little pug for uh, internal comms, fun newsletters, light-hearted content. Um, I wouldn't put it in a thought leadership piece. That would be a mistake. On the right hand side, it's completely acceptable to put this into a thought leadership piece, a report, uh, corporate communications, executive summaries, white papers, serious stuff. Um, so setting the tone is very, very important. Um, it's a nice it's a ground like framework to work off uh, foundation. Moving on to selecting visual themes. I've broken this into three sections. So the first one, um, is picking a visual theme according to color. Um, so creating consistency in your, in your piece by creating a color palette. <clears throat> um, in the left example, it's using all blues. And Daniel was saying earlier. Yeah, it doesn't just have to be one color, right? It can be, you say you choose your three brand colors and you want those to be captured in the imagery that you use. That's fine as well. Yeah. I picked out these because turtle is blue, so I immediately just 
went to blue images, but we do have hot pink and purple as brand images and a lot of other um, colors that you'll see uh, coming through the illustrations in our theme. So really great. It's just more about that consistency across the imagery that you choose. It is um, to try and avoid things looking like a Christmas tree or a rainbow, having too many things going on and um, no real storytelling. You so. clearly haven't seen my Christmas tree. <laughs> It's yours up already. Um, so on the left hand side we have blue tones. This is picking images according to colour. On the right hand side I've taken out all colour. So this is grouping images by uh, black and white um, and this immediately sets a more editorial tone I feel. Um, and it's quite difficult to go wrong if you are if you are running a whole piece in black and white images um, but that means you're sacrificing quite a lot of vibrancy. On the next one, visual motifs. So picking subject matter and tying tying this uh, to your to the words of your content. Um, so this chapter that we're in is all about imagery, and so I've picked out some literal images of people taking pictures and a picture taking machine. Um, and on the right hand side, it's more conceptual about uh, what images are. Um, images are made of light and color. Um, and so I tend not to go with literal. I prefer personally conceptual because it's much easier to run these sorts of images um, across a longer report. You could have 16 abstract images and they're all sort of telling the same story. If you had 16 pictures of people taking pictures, it would be quite monotonous. Yeah. But subject matter, um, all four of these images tie into what we're talking about right now. So visual motifs, very important. Um, and the last one, which is constantly, oh, very often overlooked, I think, is photography versus illustration. Um, we have the same scene, technically. Uh, we have photograph of people working in an office, like we all are right now, around a desk. Um, and we have an isometric illustration of people doing the same thing, working in an office. Um, so subject matter, very similar. Um, treatment, completely different. And I'd say the one, the one major um, advantage of this illustration is you could use this single piece, this single illustration for one report and you could split it up into six or eight spot illustrations and run these um, different chapters and uh, different sections of your content. Um, so you only pay for one stock image uh, and you can use it eight times if you're lucky. Um, so one is a hero image and then seven or eight times as spot images. Here, you cannot do the same thing because you'd have to pull out the couch and you'd have to pull out yeah. the drawers and the computers. <laughs> which would not run those as spot photographs, which would make no sense at all. What's cool as well is that if you're lucky enough to have um, uh, a design studio where you can get custom illustration, you can have some of the elements, for instance, and this one could be spit out um, oh, no. uh, not that one. Uh, as icons and you would just have this whole visual identity born from a single illustration like this. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to invest in good illustrators. Uh, we've got a few at Tattle. Luckily enough. Yep. So shall we hop into a demo? Hop into a demo. Yes. It's okay. Demo time. Let's go out that one again. Yeah. Um, Over to you, so, Dan. So um, <laughs> those of you who um, had a, a peek at our um, digital magazine that launched earlier this year, the Splash, you may recognize this uh, article, at least from a content perspective, mirroring marketing. Um, currently, we have a picture of a balloon, which um, I think you're stretching the abstract a yeah. bit too far in this. Um, there well, is a tiny reflection, but I'm, I'm not buying it. I think the tone's wrong, and I think the, the theme is wrong as well. So we've got the wrong subject matter, and the tone's too playful for what we're actually talking about. It makes no sense. So we picked the wrong image, and we need to fix it. So let's have a look at a couple of alternatives. So if we're taking the literal approach, which Ali mentioned earlier, then we can use something like this. Mirror man. Mirror man. Um, so let's have a look at what he looks like. We have exhausted Unsplash, by the way. So we're, we're, trying, out, we're <laughs> trying out some new options. But Unsplash is the world's largest free stock image website. I've got a few photos on there. Oh, but yeah. Yeah, and just, <laughs> yeah, look up. Alistair and Robert <laughs> for his prime photography. Um, so here we've got our mirror man in place. And uh, I don't think it's quite, I mean, it's very literal. I'm kind of mildly weirded out by the fact that he has forehead hair. I'm going to replace it. 
Yeah, but the theme, we've got the theme correct. So we've lost the balloon um, and we have a mirror, for this, which ties sort of into the content. It's just the wrong image for the piece. Let's look at something more conceptual. More conceptual, that's, and black and white, that looks great. Da -da -da. Working hard here. Working very hard. Come on, buddy. Ah, oh, the internet is <laughs> So close, Almost so close. There. Okay. Uh, and perfect. There we go. So, okay. So there is some mirroring, but it's abstract. It's black and white, which makes it feel more sophisticated. It's not a man holding a mirror. It's not a man holding a mirror, but it is mirroring. Yeah. So the tone's great. Um, the theme's great because it's it's a, an image that's mirrored upon itself. I think with dual. Double exposure from film camera. Um, I love it. I think it's getting this piece off uh, to a good start. It's also not grabbing all the attention from the text. It's it's allowing the text to take more prominence because we've taken the color out of the image. So, image selection tick. Let's have a look at. Uh, uh, is there a way we can crop an image to our liking? Oh, so scroll up a little bit. We might look at some cropping here. Let's do some cropping on, on the second, the second uh, example. So here we have two images and a little bit of copy, and we want to create a more interesting layout. Um, and we want the imagery here to to be the centerpiece of um, the page. So what we can do here is create a background image that is full bleed on half of the page. What I want to do then is create some layering, which not everybody realizes that you can do. And what's important here is when you're layering content, you have to think about the order that it appears in within the editor itself. So here I want to layer these gorgeous waves on top of the picture of the two surfers, two surfers. walking on the beach. So the waves have to come after the two surfers in the flow of the editor. Um, so I can just drag this over and you'll see, voila, it's on top. If it had been before, it would disappear behind. So that's no good. Back you come. Um, nice. So here you can see, and this might speak to your question, Natalie, where I um, stretch this out and it kind of self crops part of the image. Now, what you can do here is decide which part of the image you want to appear in in the actual container itself you hit um alt um which or you can also crop in here yeah. let's do this first of all you can crop like this and say i just want these focus on the white swash fleshy waves and it'll always keep the original so if you do crop it and you crop it again yeah you've got the original um, so, and then you can stretch it so back out it's, again. It's non-destructive, which is really useful. Um, but say you just wanted to refocus what's visible um, within this image. You can hit um, Alt or Option, and you can just sort of drag the picture up and down wow, I didn't like that. Um, to refocus it. Same with these guys in the background. I'm holding down Alt, Select, ooh, and you can just reposition where the focus is that now is oh brilliant. sorry am i teaching you something here uh, sort of. <laughs> um so i want these guys to be visible so i'm going to move them back over here oh sorry i'm using a touchpad which is a bit tricky it's my my computer not done yeah <laughs> um so um and one of the other great things say if you wanted the entire image here visible um, and you didn't want what's happening here where part of it's off screen and you're having to move it around. I want the whole picture visible. You go under the settings here on the cog and you turn off autofill. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and with autofill turned yeah. off, it forces the entirety of the image to be visible. And what happens here is you can see this white border. That's because the um, grid effect is still in place. So this image is still stretched across two columns and um, we're in a four column layout uh, and so the rest of the space just becomes this 
this blank. Um, but what you can do again, pushing down Option or Alt, is relocate the image on whichever side you want. So um, it can be in the middle. Oh, sorry, I'm having trackpad issues again. Um, swap over. So this is really useful for for positioning icons, and if you have infographics. Um... Uh, yes, anything where you really want to make sure that everything in the image is, vis is visible, but perhaps it's being affected by um, the grid layout or uh, or whatever else is on the page. Yeah. It's a really good tip. Yeah, switching autofill off. It is a game changer. It is a game changer. It's one of my <laughs> favorites, slightly lesser known I agree, functionalities. Brian. I remember the day that I taught Ali about it. I know, it blew my mind. It made me very happy. I was doing happy. everything manually in, in <laughs> one of our other editing uh, software programs, which I won't name. But um, <laughs> wasting so much time, wasting an incredible amount of time. Um, um, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. So that is the fundamentals of layering um, and stacking. It's um, beautiful. And drag and drop in turtle. And yeah. Great. Great. On to the next one. On to uh, the theory of composition. So we've spoken about typography and words, and we've spoken about imagery and pictures and illustrations, and those two are critical for content design. Um, the, the last component is composition, and that is bringing these two things together, um, which is probably, it's where the art is, and it's where things can get a little bit difficult as well, um, but they can be really beautiful. So, first thing is that grids are good. Um, Grids make it really easy to lay out information quickly. Grids are a way to create visual hierarchy quickly, again. And grids keep things neat and structured, which really appeals to me. Um, and one of my heroes, the late Massimo Vignelli, um, swore by his grid systems. He was an architect um, and actually turned graphic designer. Who knows why? <clears throat> but he, he turned out to be one of the most successful graphic designers of all time. And he swore by his grid systems. This is an example of... Um, hand-drawn. Hand-drawn, yeah. So he'd hand-draw his layouts. This was for a property or architecture magazine showcase, showcasing a property. And he would hand-draw where the images need to go um, within his predefined grid. So here we have an image taking up the whole left-hand side of, of the spread. Um, body copy taking up two columns, and he's leaving two, two row, two segments here, top blank. Um, and this is how he designed his layouts. And here's another one, <clears throat> also by the same man, um, showing principles of the rule of thirds. So leaving most of this left column blank. Um, body copy sitting in the other two columns, and bringing all attention to the top module, top left module. Um, all focus goes to the heading and then leads onto the body copy. Um, and lastly on grids, the, the grid is fundamental to Turtle. Um, and we'll show you a little bit about that, about switching it on and off and about column layouts, but um, <clears throat> the grid is really important for creating content. And that's how we've put this, this whole uh, presentation together as well. Um, there's like a skeleton behind all of these layouts. That's what the grid is. Um, some additional layout principles, um, chunking information. So we've seen this before a little bit earlier. Um, and the bottom half as an example of chunking. So instead of all of this just being body copy with no uh, segments or, and just running onto itself, um, it's actually split out with these one, two, three, four, five, six headings. And it, it makes it incredibly clear about what you're going to read. So here you're going to learn about kerning, and here you're going to learn about font size. Um, so that is an example of chunking information. Um, rule of thirds, again. So we saw Massimo's example. This is another one. Uh, this is Dieter Rams, a famous product designer, <clears throat> also a minimalist um, and great hero of mine as well. <laughs> so rule of thirds uh, doesn't only apply to um, what well, applies to photography, but it doesn't only apply to like design and text. Um, it, it can apply to any sort of visual aspect. So the main focus is um, his portrait, which is sitting in the last third of this um, three column layout. And the heading is running over two thirds of this three column layout. So it's uh, two thirds here, one third here. It's a great way to. It's kind of two thirds. Yeah. 
and uh, vertically as well. Yeah. And the last one is my favorite, that is white space. And this is all about letting content breathe. So we were saying earlier, if you're presented um, <clears throat> with a, a page or a spread, which is all just completely body copy and there's no chunking, there are no headings, there's um, no structure to, to it whatsoever. It's, we call it a brain drain. So um, the eye and the brain is immediately tired and fatigued and there's no real interest in going forward in uh, reading and engaging with the article. So <clears throat> white space is a really, really nice touch um, to spread things out over multiple pages. Let, let, yeah. And this kind of layout, even though, I mean, obviously this isn't a print, but you could really easily recreate this within, um, within title. Absolutely. We've got a few examples of those. Uh, I think we're gonna hop into a composition demo. Some layouts we made earlier. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Okay, so we're just going to really quickly recreate that page that you guys may. Oh, you went no, too far. No. Oh, throw. Uh, oops. <clears throat> that was a backstage view for you guys. Um, <clears throat> have a look at recreating. Um, you may remember. Oh no. Um, from well, earlier, yeah. the page that we showed you. We're going to look how we can recreate that from these assets, um, combining some of the stuff that we've just talked about. So we've got um, actually maybe it's better in a three-column layout. Or let's explain the columns first, though, um, just in case. Sure. Yeah. Anyone's um, not really aware. So for those who are less experienced with um, creating content in Turtle, when you're at this. Um, level view before you go down into the immersed editor you're able to change the number of columns that you want to work with essentially the grid that you want to work yep. with um, so you can choose between one and five um, you can also when coming when it comes to the grid have a look at the number of uh, rows you have to work with that's the baseline grid very very important you can turn that on and off um, at all levels um, i'm going to leave it off for now yep. um, and i'm going to opt for a Four column layout actually um, and at this level before you're even in the immerse editor you can do some stuff like um, move elements around like this um, and pin some stuff um, so maybe I'll want to pin that um, and then let's do a deep dive and let's do the type hierarchy so the hierarchy yeah so Number one, we want a nice big heading um, and a stand first. And I probably want both of these actually to stretch a bit further because it looks a little bit too tight here. Um, so I'm gonna pop that one in the feature box. I'm gonna style it so that it looks a bit more interesting. Um, and one of the things I love doing at the mm. moment, um, now that we've got full bleed feature boxes is stretching a feature box to the edge so it kind of looks like it's a label coming off the side um, and then I can move that over like that um, and it just is a little bit more interesting um, and then creating the stand first I'm going to select this make it that nice large text front I showed you earlier and similarly stretch it across like that I um, might bring it down just a little bit. So there's a bit more white space on either side. Um, maybe there's a little bit too much white space there. And here we've got a subheading, which is gonna be a medium size, bring that up. There we go. And we've got a quote here. Um, and I don't want that just sitting in the body copy like that. So I'm gonna put it into a quote box, remove, these guys and pin it down here. There we go. I want to get rid of that space so this looks a little bit neater. Um, and I actually want to bring the pole onto the first page. And we're going to do some layering. So I'm going to bring this down here and it can sit like that. And there we go. Uh, I might just hit Alt and move my little lady over. Uh, I can also change the style of this. There we go. Purple, mm, bit too jazzy. 
there we go. That looks great. And you did that really quickly. Uh, yes. I'm impressed. Yes. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> we, we have, yes, you're impressed. Of course you are. We have a question from Matilda about um, stacking text on top of images, uh, but specifically white text on images. And so the problem um, that she's saying is that in mobile view, it's no longer stacked. Um, the text drops below or above the image. Yes. It no longer sits on it. And if it's white text, then it becomes invisible. Background. I think the way that we're developing themes these days is that um, uh, white text is actually only technically available in desktop and in mobile it should be dark so um, if that's not happening in your theme let us know because we can make sure that, that gets updated yeah we can amend that um historically i've hacked it slightly and now that you can hide things in mobile um i will essentially duplicate and create a version for mobile i'll hide the white version create a version um, with black copy and hide that box behind an image or something similar in the desktop view, which is maybe slightly too hacky for some people. Uh, but the preference would be that you get in touch and we'll update your theme to make sure that that particular problem doesn't happen. Yeah, but using dark text on an image is never going to cause a problem. Using white text on an image uh, for some legacy uh, themes might be yeah. um, a bit of an issue. But let us know. Um, we have five minutes left. Um, so, uh, and we've been answering questions as we go, but if you have any final questions, um, then we can answer those. Now, we also have a few other um, examples, ones we made earlier yep. to show you. Um, is there, Ali, can you see if there's a question? There was a question about feature boxes disappearing further down and, uh, that, and then bringing them back. Again. Okay, as that's a troubleshooting thing, Stuart. We'll speak to you directly. Um, so we can figure out when that's happening. Uh, it's to find elements that may have shifted further down the page. So if this was a feature box. Um, oh, cancel. It was pinned. You'd have to. Yeah. No, it's going to appear there. Oh. So one way of uh, finding things which may have sort of disappeared um, further down the page is if it's in a feature box, you find it in the editor, in this editor column, uh, you click on the pin here, and this is how you can manually tell it where to go. Um, so page one, page two, yeah. there's another way of doing it, and that is right clicking. And now I've got yeah, this so this, to this might actually need to quite a few of you, but we've, we call this the context menu, and anything that can be pinned, any feature box, image, quotes, all of those kinds of elements, you can right click and from this menu, you can change the style, you can move to different pages. Um, if you wanna show them, then move here. Yeah, make that blue and then let's move this to page two. Um, it's gone and there it is. So, okay. Um, so, what you can also do from here is move everything that is on this page to a whole new page. Uh, oh no, only things in feature boxes. I stand corrected. Not the body copy, but any of uh, your feature book elements. Okay, we've got two minutes. Let's show some really fancy layouts that we made earlier, and then we're gonna answer some questions. If we don't have time to do both. We will come back to anybody whose questions have remained unanswered after this. But I know Ali was really keen to show you some of these layouts that he's put together. So let's spend the last two minutes on that. Yep, quick one. We've got a five column layout with an empty first column, just the quote sitting in it, body copy wrapping two columns and another two columns, and a picture of the Guernica spanning all the way across. Great use of white space here. Picasso is a favorite of mine, so it's got Alice's pick. And then Danny's pick, um, got a picture of Frida and even more white space. So ghost- I do love my white space. Uh, ghost column on the left, ghost column here, and a quote spanning these two columns and body copy just um, filling up the rest of the space, free flowing. So we haven't actually adjusted this text at all. It's just free flowing with the other elements that we've put onto the page. Uh, something more financial. 
financial or perhaps just a, a bit more suitable for your research reports or other slightly more serious content that's less editorial, you can um, use pullouts for your data, um, like we've done at the bottom here. You can have calls to actions that take you through to other content pieces in this instance, um, a button that you can click to access the report. Um, and I think there's one more, Ali, for yeah, you to show. One more. And quickly pasted. He is showing a video in a turtle story. Oh, yes. There we um, go. There's Fran. Uh, our friend Fran. Um, great. great. So we'll send this document to you all um, so that you have this uh, to reference when you're creating your information or your own documents, rather. Sorry. We'll get back to anyone who's had questions we haven't been able to answer yet. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this session. We'll be running uh, more sessions in the new year around different aspects of Turtle. Uh, we hope you'll be able to join for that. Thank you very much for your time, and um, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, and we'll answer all the questions in due course. Oh, and now we've gone very meta. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much.